and welcome back to a brand new episode of our very own podcast Let's Talk Shop where we get to have special one-on-one interactions with design industry experts. I am Koshika and today we are in conversation with Aditya Ray who is a sound designer and a music composer. Thank you for being here. We're glad to have a conversation with you and we have some questions for you. So I'll start with the first one. Sure. Uh, to a lay person, how do you explain what sound design is? So sound design essentially is the art of recreating sounds and manipulating them and turning them into sound effects. You know, the, all, the, all these different sound effects which we constantly keep hearing in the films and, mm. you know, our web series and everything. You know, whatever, you know, whatever sounds you hear other than the dialogue is basically the result of sound design, right? And uh, sound design is uh, sound design. Further, you know, we can categorize into some of uh, some of the sounds are foley sounds as well, right? So some of the sounds are recreated uh, recreated in the studio, and uh, you know, just to show the movements. For example, footsteps or you know, hit sounds, punching sounds, and everything. So those are fo- foley sounds, and it's a it's just a further categorization of the of the uh, of the broader term, right? So yeah, sound design essentially is you know the art of recreating creating sound and you know using them in interesting ways and you know uh, to recreate ambiences you know to make people feel the way uh, you know to make people feel you know you know uh, special in in these uh, in the films we watch you know uh, so yeah so how do you recreate those sounds how do you manage to get the idea of that this particular thing will sound some similar to another thing how do you recreate how do you have those recreations Doing so, the so there are there are a lot of ways to do it. Uh, so, you know, we can record sounds. We can record specific sounds which we need. For example, uh, if we want to record ambiences, right? Ambiences uh, is basically the place we are in, right? So, for example, a forest ambience or a desert ambience or a rain rain ambience or the ambience of an ocean, right? So, there are all these different environments which we try to record uh, while uh, doing sound design, right? So, uh, one of them, one of uh, one of the way to do this is that you know we record ambiences and we treat them and you know we use them in a sound design. Uh, the other thing is we record. Uh, you know, we we can record some sounds, and you know, in the post production, we can manipulate them using different uh, you know uh, audio plugins and things like that. You know, and uh, a lot of it uh, has to do with you know just imagining how imagining the sounds and you know imagining creative ways to do it. I mean, you know, hitting things around and you know just uh, uh, just moving stuff around and seeing what you know what uh, what sounds a specific uh, object can make, and you know just and then just uh, you know. Uh, imagining you know where we can use those sounds uh, so that's there and then again like I said Foley sounds you know which we recreate in the studios which are absolute sounds like you know again walking and punching and things like that so it majorly comes from experience how often do you hear sounds majorly it comes from that experience of how much have you heard have you actually listened yeah yeah so like I always say that you know uh, Observing is a huge part of learning sound design and uh, uh, you know if you don't listen if you don't observe your surroundings you know you can uh, you know it, it, I think I, to me personally I think this is uh, that is the different difference between a good sound design and a bad sound design where there is uh, where there are these little details present in the sound which only can which can only happen when you actually start and listen right so it's uh, it's extremely crucial to listen and to observe your surroundings and uh, um, yeah, so uh, yeah. So what was the most interesting experience you've had while recreating sounds or creating polies? I mean to me all of the experiences were you know uh, They were an adventure of the uh, on its own, right? Uh, it's always a puzzle to solve right uh, you know you have a situation in front of you and you need to figure out you know what's the best way to get this sound you know and all that listening and observation comes into play right so like i love recording sounds of uh, you know the wing flaps of the birds and uh, you know it's just recording them with towels you know and uh, they have all they have their wings weigh differently right so they have different intensity when they're flapping them so you know using different objects like a paper paper towel or a, a paper bag and 
and if the heavy the wigs are heavy you can use a heavier towel right to create these sounds you know uh, that's always uh, really fun and uh, you know uh, uh, creating sounds of insects, you know, uh, I have done sounds of frogs, you know, uh, you know, j just by using a flute and, you know, recording it and pitching it up and down and things like that, you know, mm. so it's always, it's always a puzzle, you know, and, you know, it's always uh, so much fun to solve it. Uh, many more such instances and uh, it's also about uh, what I what I really have fun with while working is you know capturing capturing some moments of silence you know while doing as well you know doing sound design and uh, there was this one scene I wanted to recreate using uh, you know and I also believe that you know in some scenes the lesser sounds you use the more intense it gets and uh, I always like to play around with that idea so uh, you know uh, because less is more you know like that so you know in one of those uh, i had to design one of those scenes right where a dance performance is happening right which is usually quite a loud thing because the music is happening and things like that right uh, but uh, you know what happened what i decided to do was i just uh, i i just challenged myself to recreate the scene using two or three sounds right and uh, it was happening in an open theater open open theater and uh, it was night time right so all i used was the sound of crickets and uh, and the sound of her ghungru i think you know and uh, just by using these two sounds you know the uh, you know the the scene became so much greater than what it than uh, what it would have been you know if i had added music to that so you know doing things like that you know figuring out you know how something might sound different if uh, like again like just figuring out the puzzle you know it's that's that's what i like to do so, i treat it as a puzzle uh, yeah. as students how do we decide on how whether to put the music in that particular scene or not uh so uh, yeah so sound editing sound mixing yeah that comes like those are the terms which w uh, you would use sound editing especially so uh again we need to you know to listen and understand watch a lot of films you know understand how sound works in movies right we need to watch uh, i think i like I, I always preach this like we need to watch a lot of films to understand sound right so that's one great way to do it uh, and uh, you know uh, and just by experience it comes uh, comes to you right like you understand the way a scene flows right so you know you use music to uh, and again like sound design is also a tool right so you use sound design to heighten heighten some of the moments in your film right and you use use music to do the same right if you add too much of both right it, it's just the it's it's it wouldn't it just wouldn't work right mm -hmm. so we need to figure out a right balance between sound design music dialogues you know everything right so, and that's where sound mixing comes into play right so that's what we do when we mix right we ensure that you know in 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 different situations uh, we show what is what is what the scene demands right what is important uh, if in a particular scene the dialogue is important we wouldn't put uh, we wouldn't put too much of the ambience in front of the dialogue but if we want to show chaos for example we might just do that right we mm -hmm. we might push the dialogue back and we might just uh, add the ambience or heighten up the ambience uh, uh, you know uh, by by a lot and uh, just to show chaos right so yeah so th that's how you know uh, with experience and by just listening and understanding and watching films and how sound works in films that's why we do uh, while teaching also we do this film appreciation uh, you know we have this uh, we always do this like where we watch we, where we just sit and watch films right uh, and understand you know the minute details of why a sound was used in a particular way or why some place didn't have the music or why some place just had the sound design or and why some place just had the music right all of all of what we do has to have some sort of a reason to it right and the reason is the user the viewer experience right so by keeping that in mind we just uh, do our work and you know but yeah that's basically it right pretty much watching a lot of films and experiencing how sound works in films so i've been hearing terms like sounds and sound effects so is there a difference between the two or are they the same sound and sound effect i mean sound is sound right sound is the sound is the physics term which we know right sound effects is what we create from sounds right so that's the difference right uh, so, and yeah but like, again again to understand sound effects to create sound effects it's very important to understand how sound works 
So yeah, you know, you need to understand, you know, how frequency changes the sound, you know, how tonality affects the sound, right? How the even the temperature, how how that affects the sound, you know, the physical properties of a of the weather, you know, how that affects the physical property of the sound, you know. We need to understand all of this to put in our design because, you know, that's when a design happens, right? Design. Uh, uh, design lies in the minute details right good design lies in the minute details right so we need to understand all of these properties of sound and how sound gets affected to understand what to uh, to make a good sound design happen yeah. Yeah. so besides the technical skills what are the other skills which can shape us into a better designer or a sound designer I mean <sighs> you know technical skill aside i mean you know i i think we can say it as a general statement right that you need to be a good human being you know first of all right leave apart everything else right forget sound forget sound design any forget everything right i think the first thing we need to be is just is just you know stay humble you know you know be a good person and uh, everything happens from there on, I feel, right? So I think, uh, you know, ethical values are really important, especially while working in the industry. You know, uh, you might be a really talented person, but if you, if people don't enjoy working with you, they won't call you twice, right? Yeah. But if people enjoy working with you, they will always invite you again and again and again. And that's how you uh, network and that, that's how you make connections, right? That's how you make people, uh, people, you know, a project is really fun to work on when the, when the people you're working with really, really love you, right? That's when it really becomes rewarding, right? Yeah. So, you know, yeah. So, you know, be a good person, I guess, <laughs> you know, apart from all of that. Yeah. So much, sir. We are very glad to have you here. For more design driven content like this, do follow Chitkara Design School on Instagram and LinkedIn. Until then, this is me, Koshika, signing off.